Psychoanalysts were about to move into big business and use their techniques not just to create model citizens, but model consumers. Last week's episode showed how Freud's American nephew, Edward Bernays, had been the first to convince American corporations that they could sell products by connecting them with people's unconscious feelings. But now, a group of psychoanalysts were going to take what Bernays had begun and invent a whole range of techniques to get inside and manage the unconscious mind of the consumer. They were led by Ernest Dichter. Dichter had practiced next door to Freud in Vienna, but he had come to America and set up the Institute for Motivational Research in an old mansion north of New York. This is the Institute for Motivational Research, a place devoted to the intriguing business of finding out why people behave as they do, why they buy as they do, why they respond to advertising as they do. And this is Dr. Ernest Dichter. We don't go out and ask directly, uh, why do you buy, why don't you? What we try to do instead is to understand the total personality, the self-image of the customer. We use all the resources of modern social sciences. It opens up some stimulating psychological techniques for selling any new product. Like the other psychoanalysts, Dichter believed that American citizens were fundamentally irrational beings. They could not be trusted. Their real reasons for buying products were rooted in unconscious desires and feelings. And Dichter wanted to find ways to uncover what he called the secret self of the American consumer. He was trying to get out of people's mind the unconscious motivations that they had for purchasing. Uh, these could be sexual, they could be psychological, they could be sociological, they could be a demand for status, a demand for recognition. There were things that people couldn't verbalize or wouldn't verbalize because they were too secret to them. They were too much a part of their nature and they, were, they would be embarrassed. They would be embarrassed if they came out and said things like this. He would interview people but not ask them direct questions but let them talk freely like you do in psychoanalysis. And that was his background. And so he said, why can't we have a group therapy session about products? All right? And so Dichter built this room up above his garage, and it, he said, we can have psychoanalysis of products. They can actually act out and verbalize their wants and needs. What we're going to do is try a couple of these uh, salad dressings. Now let's see what happens. Here's our typical housewife. She doesn't follow the instructions. And they could be observed and watched, and other people could comment, and they could talk about it, and everybody could join in. He was the first to do this. This was absolutely the first thing that was ever done. And he had a movie projector up there where you could show advertisements and things like that, and people could react to them. And he invented the whole technique for mining the unconscious about the hidden psychological wants that people had about products. This became the focus group. It worked! Victor's breakthrough came with a focus group study he did for Betty Crocker Foods. Like many food manufacturers in the early 50s, they had invented a new range of instant convenience foods. But although consumers had told market researchers they would welcome the idea, in fact, they were refusing to buy them. The worst problem was the Betty Crocker cake mix. Dicta did a series of focus groups where housewives free associated about the cake mix. He concluded that they felt unconscious guilt at the new image being promoted of ease and convenience. In other words, he understood that the barrier to the consumption of the product was the housewife's feeling of guilt about using it. They basically, on one hand, wanted to make it easy for themselves, but they felt guilty about it. So what you've got to do in those circumstances is remove the barrier, the barrier being guilt. The way you do that is to give the housewife a greater sense of participation. And how do you do that? By adding an egg. Simple as that. As simple as that. Dicta told Betty Crocker to put an instruction on the packet that the housewife should add an egg. It would be an unconscious symbol, he said, of the housewife mixing in her own eggs as a gift to her husband, and so would lessen the guilt. 
Betty Crocker did it, and the sales soared. My cake is ready. The consumer may have basic needs that the consumer himself or herself doesn't fully understand. You have to know what those needs are in order to fully exploit the consumer. Is it wrong to give people what they want by taking away their defenses, helping re remove their defenses? It seems so much longer than last year. It is. Nearly four inches longer in some models. Oh! Dicta's success led to a rush by corporations and advertising agencies to employ psychoanalysts. They became known as the Depth Boys, and they promised to show companies how to make millions by connecting their products with people's hidden desires. Dicta himself became a millionaire, famous for inventing slogans like, A Tiger in Your Tank. Even the marketing of the Barbie doll came from a children's focus group. And so it goes. But Dicta was convinced that this was far more than just selling. Like Anna Freud, he believed that the environment could be used to strengthen the human personality. And products have the power both to sate inner desires and give people a feeling of common identity with those around them. It was a strategy for creating a stable society. Dicta called it the strategy of desire. To understand a stable citizen, you have to know that modern man quite often tries to work off his frustrations by spending on self-gratification. Modern man is eternally ready to fill out his self-image by purchasing products which complement it. If you identify yourself with a product, it can have a therapeutic value. It improves your self-image and you become a more secure person and you have suddenly this confidence of going out in the world and doing what you want successfully. Bernard believed that that would then improve the whole of our society and become the best society on this planet. <laughs>